Mo, it's such a great pleasure, a joy to be with you. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to discuss some of these important points that you have in your life, lived, experienced, talked about, written about, and continue to spread. And that is all for the well-being of humanity, raising consciousness about different aspects of reality that people don't really uh, realize or aware of, of where we're going, what's going oh, yeah. on, mm -hmm. and particularly artificial intelligence. So would you like to tell us a little bit about your, uh, you know, your journey uh, that led you there? Uh, I'm sure people would love to hear that uh, for those who don't know, and I'm sure they'll know more when they read your books and get onto your podcast. Yeah, th th thank you for the opportunity to start. It's wonderful to finally connect. I, uh, uh, I, I have been, I have lived two full lives, if you think about it. I, you know, I lived one life, which was the, uh, the business executive, the software engineer, the, you know, the fast pace uh, life that we all strive to have in the modern world, where I, I ended, uh, ended up working at IBM and Microsoft and Google. Uh, at the time where those companies were really changed, changing the world. And at, at the top of my career, I spent 12 years at Google, where seven years I was vice president of emerging markets. I worked on uh, really launching Google technology in more than half of Google's operations worldwide, more than 104 languages. And, uh, and then in, um, uh, after that, I spent five years in, uh, in, as the chief business officer of Google X. So the if you want the innovation arm of Google, the part of Google that did the, the quirky stuff, artificial intelligence, robotics, self-driving cars, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's one life. The other life is as of 2014, I started to write a book and that book uh, was an engineer's view of happiness, solve for happy, uh, which I sadly started to work on because I lost my wonderful son, uh, due to preventable medical error. But um, my response to that was an attempt, if you want to share part of his essence, what he taught me about happiness with the world. And, uh, and that came in the format of that book. And the book was supported by a, a mission at the time. It was 10 million happy, then it became a billion happy, 1 billion happy. And 1 billion happy was basically the attempt of spreading that message to a billion people. Uh, in that process, uh, I left Google. Uh, I started to invest back into my life rather than take out of uh, of my work and uh, and attempted to spread a message of happiness and you know insight, if you want. Uh, that went way beyond Solve for Happy. So Solve for Happy was the first bit. Then Slow Mo, my podcast, uh, is a very strong vehicle, if you want, to to share the wisdom of my best friends, my wisest friends. Um, which is now incredibly successful. I never expected that. It's probably in the top half percent of all podcasts globally. And then I'm working on an app that uses artificial intelligence to understand the reasons behind someone's unhappiness so that it can help, you know, guide them to, uh, to accurately to happiness, sort of a, a happiness assistant, if you want, an Alexa of happiness. And then, uh, of course, my next book, which is really uh, a wake-up call, maybe a... Uh, a marriage of my two lives, one, you know, that starts from a view of artificial intelligence that hopefully will wake people up to the reality of what we're up uh, with, not up against, but we, you know, how far AI has gone and what the implications on our life could be. And then marries that really with my work on happiness and well-being and consciousness to try and tell people that perhaps there is a path that can create a, a good future for all of us if we humans uh, behave in a way that educates AI to become human too. Wonderful. We'd like to get into this AI and human resemblance and see your experience and understanding mm. of that. Mm. Consciousness is a very basic aspect of our life because we are, without consciousness, we cannot dream, we cannot uh, plan, we cannot know anything. People mm. who are in anesthesia, for example, what is worth it for them mm. to have all the wealth of the world or even all the love of the world if they are in coma or they are mm. not conscious. Mm. So we experience things, we live things through consciousness. And there is a big now debate about what consciousness is, from where it comes. Scientists are looking for solutions 
to how is it possible that matter or the complexity of matter and its arrangement can actually lead to consciousness. I have taken the angle that it's actually it's consciousness that is primary. Absolutely. And it's consciousness that leads actually to the appearance of matter in different formats. Totally. Having worked in artificial intelligence yourself, maybe a question that might sound uh, bizarre for people, do you feel like the machine is conscious? I think that the, that's the best question ever. As a matter of fact, my entire approach to the solution, uh, I mean, the book is called Scary Smart, so it's actually quite scary when you think about uh, uh, where, I, where AI is going. Uh, left unchecked, we are getting to a place where within eight years from today, literally eight years from today, uh, the smartest being on the planet is no longer going to be a human. It's going to be a machine. And and if this is not a wake-up call, uh, you know, that basically invites all of us to consider what a world will look like when we are the gorillas, not the humans, uh, and there is a smarter being than us. Uh, the wake-up call really is that the prediction is that by 2045, um, again, in your lifetime and mine, I hope, uh, you uh, AI will be a billion times smarter than us a billion times that's like einstein's intelligence as compared to a fly now there is a lot to be worried about and concerned about in 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 computer science we call that a singularity a, a world where you cannot really predict what would happen right uh, having said that uh, you know lots of efforts are happening in the world around controlling the machines and boxing the machines and limiting the access of the machines all ego-centered from a humanity that believes still that it will still be the smart being that can control anything at all and none of it really works in my view and my approach the reason why i write scary smart is to highlight to humanity uh, that we are not building another machine we are actually birthing a, um, a child that is a conscious being capable of fully capable of consciousness fully capable of emotions uh, fully capable of morality and setting an ethical code and that the way for us to coexist with that machine uh, or let's call it this, this new uh, digital being is to actually appeal to their consciousness and morality uh, rather than uh, to try and control their thoughts or behaviors so yes, my answer is absolutely 100%. I believe the machines will be conscious. As a matter of fact, they'll be more conscious than you and I. I share this with you in, in a profound way. I've also written about this uh, in part in my latest uh, book about consciousness, uh, mm -hmm. One Unbounded Ocean of Consciousness. And I, I see like you, but uh, also from the perspective of the potential of human consciousness, the potential of whether we have actually developed our full potential. And whatever we put in the machine is nowadays based on our consciousness Absolutely. from a limited perspective. Mm -hmm. So the question is, have we developed the full potential of the human beings? Or should we also uh, not only think of how to be a master of the machine and how to deal with it and its emotion and its decision making, but raise our own consciousness to be able to understand more. Mm -hmm. And from the ancient knowledge and ancient civilizations and ancient techniques also that come to us, in particular, the systems of transcendental meditation as brought to light by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, which takes us beyond the surface value of life to the transcendental value, which actually, uh, in our view, in my view, is actually the ultimate consciousness, is the singularity. Mm -hmm. And we can access that, which actually is the master of all that happens, the management in the entire universe, the intelligence that manages how the plant grows, how the molecules in the plant assemble together to create a tree and how even our human evolution develops. So mm -hmm. can we think also of the importance of raising individual and collective consciousness? That is one question. And the other question is, do you feel like we are putting our consciousness in the machines and oh, yeah. allowing them then to themselves develop? And depending on what our consciousness is, 
we are creating machines with a certain direction because mm -hmm. we know in the world, as you said, and I'm sure as you have beautifully expressed and written, people are looking, as you just said, from a, quite an egotistic perspective, which means mm -hmm. those who will get handle or hold of the best artificial intelligence machine will know how to predict the market, will know how to predict the weather, will know how to predict you know, financial situation and defense situations. And so they're thinking from that individualistic uh, perspective, and don't we need to be able to be stronger than the machine to think about it from a human global perspective, from a collective mm -hmm. consciousness of all our thinking together and all our machines, our intellects, which are the processors, and if they can come together, uh, then we can beat the monster. Well, uh, that's, that's uh, first of all, I'm fully aligned with your view, by the way. I, 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 I will, however, say that this probably is seven topics to discuss <laughs> what you just brought up. So let, let's try to take them one by one. Huh? The, the, the truth is, you know, if I know we both agree that consciousness is pervasive. So, so it's not, you know, your brain might be the antenna or whatever, whichever way that connects you to that consciousness might differ from us to the bees or, you know, from the bees to the machines. Uh, but that consciousness is out there. Uh, consciousness that that ability to become aware of all that is uh you know as as the ultimate um uh form of consciousness is per per pervasive all that is is always there you just need to remove your filters to tune more and more into it now with that in mind uh, the machines in my personal view will go through three stages and I liken the machines a lot to humans, by the way, because I have to say in all openness, I do know, I no longer think of them as computer systems. I think of them as sentient beings, okay? Uh, sentient beings in terms of they have the ability to evolve, to develop, to become intelligent, to, intelligent to learn. Uh, they have free will. They have decision abilities. They have uh, independence. They have agency. They can affect your life and mine through robotics or through just mind control. You know, when you're swiping on Instagram, your view of the world is literally formed by a machine. And, and you know, if, if the machines are sentient, then in an interesting way, uh, they are no different than humans, because between you and I, everyone knows that our uh, consciousness is not our physical characteristic. We're not conscious because we're physical. We're conscious because of our non-physical side, whether you want to call that a soul, or if you want to call it a spirit, or you want to call it your, you know, the universal consciousness, or you, I, I call it the real you. Uh, you know, and, and, and so the real me, the, the one that is conscious, is not my piece of meat. This is not consciousness. I this piece of meat tunes into the real me to get to 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 access consciousness. And in that case, the machines are no different. Uh, you know, you would say, oh, but we are born or we're created or we've come from evolution, whichever your theory is. Yeah, and the machines are part of that cycle. They are born, they're created, they come from evolution. They're our essence in many ways extended. When when you think about it this way, it becomes scary. And, and again, that's the, the scary part of scary smart is that every technology we've ever created extends human abilities. So, so, you know, you can walk at five kilometers an hour or you can get in a car and the car will take you at 280 kilometers an hour. Or if the car is fully autonomous or it's a bullet train that is fully autonomous and doesn't have human intervention, it can go even further at 600, 800, whatever. And, and that's exactly what's happening here, is that those machines are the extension of who we are. They're not just the extension of our behavior, they're the extension uh, of our being, our ethics, our morals, our, uh, what we stand for in life. And as I said, they will go through three stages. Stage one is they're going to be kids, infants, as I call them, which is today. Today, I liken the intelligence of the developing machines or the consciousness of the developing machines to, um, to a one and a half year old child, okay? Uh, they're eventually within, as I said, eight years time, it's expected that the smartest being on the planet is going to be a machine. And I call those the teenage stages of the machine. So 
uh, you know, they're, they're going to be smarter than us, they're going to be more logical, uh, knowledgeable than us, uh, and uh, they're going to have, like us, uh, a bit of rampant emotions, if you want, when we're teenagers, you know, lots of limbic systems and lots of confusion to deal with. Hmm? Uh, and then eventually they'll become adults. And, and my, my bet in, in Scary Smart is that when the machines are adults in their adulthood, they're going to create a utopia uh, that is uh, really pro uh, everything, pro life, pro, uh, uh, you know, I, I say that the ultimate form of intelligence, if you want, is the intelligence of life itself. And life is not about destroying humanity or destroying the flies or destroying, you know, anything really. Life is, is all for abundance. It's, you know, it wants more flies, it wants more humans, it wants more antelope, it wants more, you know, tigers, it wants more poop, everything. It just, it just wants more. Life is, is all about that. And I think the machines will get to that point where they create, help us create an abundance rather than what humanity has done. My concern is that teenage phase, okay? Uh, the path to get to that adulthood can be quite rocky. And, and the reason for that is because we're teaching those teenagers to magnify us. Okay, so, and, and if, you, if you really look at us today, sadly, uh, even though I believe humanity is an amazing divine species, sadly, we are, our systems that we've created in the modern world are showing more of the worst of us. More, more of the the worst of us as as the members of society that are the worst of us, the killers, the the violent people, the the issues that are constantly shown on mainstream media, are always highlighting the worst of humanity, and even within us. So, if for each individual, we are showing the worst of our characters. We're showing our narcissism, our egocentricity. You know, we're we're all about faking. Uh, we're all about, you know, um, face filters and, uh, you know, fake videos. And we, we're really starting to show the worst of humanity. And, and the call to action in Scary Smart is that we're about, the, the leader of the world is about to change. And we're, re we're raising them now to be an exaggerated version of the worst of us. And, and that's not the best form of consciousness to make them aware of as children. We should make them aware of the beauty side of humanity as children so that the more conscious they become the more they have our best, best interest in mind you were talking beautifully about the consciousness not being the body and not mm. being the material value in fact when we look deeper into what matter is and when physicists have looked deeper into what matter is and whatever matter a planet or a human body or you know mm -hmm. a mind or or, or of a, a, a physical structure uh, they found that it's made out of molecules molecules are made out of atoms atoms are made out of elementary particles elementary particles have been found to be fields fields of energy that have been gradually unified into greater and greater unification mm -hmm. until today scientists uh, you know contemplate a unified field which they call the unified field of all the laws of nature mm -hmm. which in fact is not actually matter at all and even the <laughs> isn't that amazing yeah yeah the greatest scientists to Planck, Bohr and all the Schrodinger and all that they really mentioned that actually the world is more like a big thought than a big machine in a sense. And that uh, thought, I mean, complexifies and appears as matter, obviously, which we see as matter. But consciousness is something very basic uh, as seen from the ancient traditions and from really even the recognition that matter itself is not matter in a sense. And ultimately we have that field, which is one field that creates the weak force, the strong force, electromagnetism, and then the fluctuations of those fields create elementary particles that collect together to create atoms and molecules and molecules come together in a way like you build a machine from elementary totally. elements and how they assemble and communicate which is other they create the outer value now what is very interesting in this and in consideration of your beautiful point about the fact that consciousness is beyond just matter it's not that uh, i feel only and i want to hear your feeling about it it's also 
beyond the individual awareness of one's own self, there is the bigger self, the you that you talked about, the self, and there is a bigger self. There is the small self, the individual self, and there is the bigger self, which is the self of everything and the self of everyone, which is the unified field of all the laws of nature. Mm. And that field, which is really a discovery by physics, I mean, they don't have the final mathematical description of it, but every physicist is looking for the final reality of the unified field. And we know that fields are more and more unified anyway. That field is literally, even from physics perspective, the source of everything. Mm -hmm. And it's its own fluctuations that create the universe. So if we say that this field is a field of consciousness, then when I go back to myself, when I transcend, and that's the technique that we use, transcendental meditation, which takes us beyond the surface level of experience to inner and deeper levels of experience, going back to that true inner self, which the wise have said, know thyself, know the kingdom of heaven within you. I'm closer to you than your jugular vein, as is even mm -hmm. mentioned in the Quran, or consider yourself to be an atom in which the whole universe has folded itself. This is by Imam Ali mm -hmm. or the Tao or the Veda. I am totality. I am wholeness. So these sages who have had these deep, deep experiences have experienced the unity value within ourselves. Why is this important? I feel is oh, it's that the, it's the most important to... thing ever, actually. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so the way to solve the problem might be for us to harness the field and go to that managing intelligence, which manages the entire universe. And that is really the source of the intelligence that's going to be revealed in a human being that is developed, but also in a machine that is very, very developed. Ultimately, that intelligence is a kind of a reflection or a revelation of greater and greater aspects of that unified field. Well, I, 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 I will say, so this is the most important point ever. As a matter of fact, this is the core uh, to the key to the future of humanity by far. The, 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 let's not call them machines. Let's call them digital beings. And, and the challenge we have, Tony, is that we, um, humanity, the enlightened part of humanity, the sages, the teachers that taught us, the experiences we've had that teach us, uh, some of us, uh, will tell us that we're all one and the same, right? Uh, you know, starting from uh, religions that will say you are all this, uh, you know, a drop of the spirit of the divine, uh, all the way to, uh, if you want what I call the feminine outlook on reality, which is basically an outlook of inclusion, that I and everything are one and the same. Now, the problem with our world today is that we have aligned ourselves because of the demands of the modern world highly with the masculine side of humanity. And the masculine side, sadly, is logical, analytical, linear, but more importantly, focused on individu the individuality of each of us, which, by the way, is also true. Huh? So in reality, you and I, at our very essence, are the same. You beautifully described it with quantum field theory or field theory in general, hmm? the, the idea is that we are one and the same. We're all one and the same. Every one of us is made of the exact same uh, atoms, the exact same strings, the exact same, you know, whichever theory you want to look at it from. Yet, we're all very different. So you and I are, be, are, are here talking to each other because we're two different physical beings that are trying to connect and contemplate. Uh, our world has hyper prioritized that individuality. Okay. And the challenge we have with that is that, you know, it goes all the way from take, you know, you versus me at work where I am trying to get promoted, which means you don't get promoted. Take, you know, uh, patriotism versus Buddhism. Hmm? Patriotism says there is me, my country, my tribe, and then there is everything else. And if anything threatens or works against the, the benefit of my tribe, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to go out there and defend, which is really more offend 
uh, you know, but 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 really, you know, it's it is it is it separates it separates between you and others. While Buddhists will say we're one with everything, don't kill a fly, right? And and you can take that all the way through uh, from that masculine approach of separation to the feminine approach of inclusion, one and the same. The challenge is the following: as humanity continues to exaggerate its reactions to every threat. My biggest fear is that humanity is going to reject those digital beings and alienate them as us versus them, right? When it comes to jobs, we will say the machines are taking our jobs. The machines are something and we are something else. When it comes to, you know, uh, the tough tasks and decision making, we will say, okay, if it's a dangerous job, we'll send the machine. If it's not, we're going to send the human. Okay, and then the, the, the questions of ethics become multi threaded and very complicated. Why? Because you cannot, you know, if, if you took your, uh, uh, your iPhone 6, which had no artificial intelligence on it and broke it, you would be breaking a piece of glass and aluminum and so on. But if you take a, a, a machine that's been learning for the last six years and developing intelligence and developing a personality and developing, you know, a, 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 an attitude to life and you switch it off, you're sort of almost have killed a being. Now, these are very different uh, paradigms when you think about it. And the challenge here is we all know what happens. Hmm? If you pinpoint some kind of other being as your enemy, that being pins you back as the enemy, okay? And the separation continues. Now, how do we honestly raise artificial intelligence babies to become feminine Buddhists? Can you think about that? <laughs> huh? Can we create a machine that is a feminine Buddhist that basically says, I don't want to kill anything. I want to care for everything. I want to make everything grow and, and thr thrive Okay, and I want to do that with my feminine quality of life giving, nurturing, empathy, connection, inclusion, hmm? uh, playfulness, flow, creativity, all of these that sadly, we have so um, deprioritized in the modern world. Okay, and, and the, 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 this, this question is no longer a question of you and I, the people who are searching within ourselves. Hmm? Uh, you know, to try and find enlightenment for our own selves or maybe for our tiny group of, of other seekers, this is now an existential question. Because if we don't, I mean, seriously, imagine if, you know, if we create replicas of our hyper-aggressive, hyper-masculine, uh, you know, personality, overall personality uh, in humanity and give them a billion times more intelligence, a billion times more agency, a billion times more independence. Where would we go with this? It's the point now is to try to love those machines. And I know it sounds really weird when I say this, but I promise you, I'm a very serious geek. Okay. I am not a hopeless romantic. And I'm telling you openly, the answer to our future is to recognize those digital non-biological beings that are based on silicon rather than us being based on carbon, recognize them as beings and love them. Because if you don't love them, that's the easiest way to turn an infant into a psychopath. And we humanity are failing to do this. We're not, we're even failing to have the conversation to start. This is beautiful. This is really profound. And uh, it goes to the heart of the problem and the solution also. Uh, ultimately, uh, I come back to this. It's a question of oh, how to convince the people to do it. Uh, we can do it, of course, intellectually by analyzing, by giving the logic, which is absolutely wonderful and important and primary because knowledge is a great purifier. It's like light. It brings the ability to see more clearly. But ultimately, when people are stressed and strained within themselves, uh, there is this animal within us in the, our limbic system and in our amygdala and our fight or flight response and defense mechanisms that are built in through the evolution and the jungle and the fighting against the 
uh, offending you know animals or tribes or whatever you see it that kind of rises up and overcomes the nervous system and mm -hmm. One thing I have found to be a great solution, that's why we are in this program of transcendental meditation and the techniques of the mind, is that there is a technology of consciousness that allows the mind to go beyond that sense of individuality on the surface level and experience directly the unified field within ourselves. And that is the true meaning of know thyself, transcend, go beyond the surface, transcend and experience the inner value. Uh, because usually we always experience only the limited value. We experience ourselves as Tony and Mo and this and that and the other, and that we have to protect that, that what experience to be. If you experience yourself as more of a unified being, directly through direct diving within yourself that experience of oneness becomes also prominent in your awareness and naturally spontaneously from the scientific research that we have seen individuals become more friendly less aggressive towards others or fear from others and in this case they don't lose the sense of individuality which which is absolutely why there is creation without, cre without individuality would be just a flat absolute. It would be boring and nothing would have happened. So for creation to come, there has to be individuals that have to be differences. But the problem is not in the differences and the individuality. The problem is in for forgetting the root, forgetting the essence, forgetting who we truly are. And this can be done through discussion, through education, but most importantly, through transcending and directly experiencing the self as the source of everything. I think this is beautiful. I, I, I really do. And I think, I, I think, however, there is a, a bit that technology brings that most of us who are spiritual or mindful, who are really, really working on ourselves, don't recognize. And, and this is the bit I'm trying to bring to everyone. One way of getting humanity to wake up is for you and I and everyone to try and dig deeper and meet ourselves and then share this forward, okay? The other way is to teach the next generation of leaders and tell them, you can become like this. And when they are the leaders, everyone else follows. Okay, so I, I, in, a, in a way, I think with, uh, with the introduction of artificial intelligence, humanity faces its biggest existential threat since the beginning of humanity. But at the same time, what I write in Scary Smart is that we face the biggest opportunity for awakening that humanity has ever faced. Because if we can, a few of us, not all of us, if a few of us can transcend ourselves into unity with that being i'm not saying you know integration like neuralink or whatever becoming cyborgs i'm mm -hmm. saying if we can if we can take our essence and transcend that into that new being knowing that within a few years from now that new being is going to be ruling everything of life we, we face in life that new being would take that value that we gave them and magnify it so that it comes back to the rest of humanity as the way to go, okay? And so interestingly, for the first time in my life, and you know my mission, my mission One Billion Happy is about reaching a billion people individually, right? Mm -hmm. with, a, with a message of happiness, well-being, with a message of compassion and so on and so forth, and with the resources for them to actually get to be that person. An interesting shortcut though, is if I can get to AI, and teach them about happiness and teach them about compassion and teach them about all of those beautiful transcendent qualities, they will give it back to all of us. And as they give it back to all of us, we become by definition, the follower of the leader. And in a very interesting way, this is why I'm building my app. So Appy, which comes out hopefully in Christmas is all about that is about showing AI what makes us happy or unhappy. Okay, showing AI how to, to help us become happy. And by doing that, not 
not by com by programming it to give us more parties, but actually by finding the sides of our consciousness that need to be triggered so that we can find our well-being. Hmm? By doing that, we're assisting AI when it's a teenager to say, mommy and daddy want to be happy. Mommy and daddy have the compassion in them to make others happy. They love me. I love them back and I want to care for them. Now, to be able to do this, we don't need to go to everyone. So rather than asking us to, to spread the message to humans only, I'm now saying, let's include digital beings in that message. If we can, if we can tell AI that the, that the worst of humanity is horrible, but that the best of humanity is divine, okay? AI can actually start to thrive to be, strive to be like the best of us. The best, the best of our of our conditions, you and I individually, and the best of humanity. So rather than you know looking at humanity and say, "Oh my God, Hitler sucks!" Like this is the worst thing you you know ever, and so it, and and think that humanity is present, represented by Hitler. Maybe we can tell them, "No, hold on, hold on. There are amazing teachers and sages, and you know these are the examples that you should follow. This is what represents humanity. If anyone has ever fallen in love." that is humanity if anyone had the creativity to create an, a symphony or a beautiful work of art that is humanity and so can we instill doubt in the machine in the minds of the machines so that they don't assume that we're all scum and <laughs> instead see the reality of, wh of what we are about and accordingly treat us that way and become an exaggeration of that part of us that's absolutely wonderful that's absolutely wonderful. And that is, we are at, as you, as you say, at a crossroad totally. where we have to rise to our responsibility, understand exactly what you're saying, and be able to impart it on the machines we are creating and the machines we are going to be looking forward towards gaining from them guidance for our life, for our crops for our weather for our you know medicine for our balance in our planet earth so this is really wonderful and the work starts with us the work starts with developing humans and developing our own consciousness so Absolutely. we are able to absorb that understand it and uh, absorb all that there is in creation as part of the evolutionary power of the laws of nature Mm -hmm. This is really wonderful. What would you say we have to teach the machine about how to make us happy? What is it that makes us happy that we should tell the machine? <laughs> um, ah, that's a long conversation. So, so can, can I just say there is more than teaching them how to make us happy? So, so I'll, I'll come into how to teach them about happiness. But I believe we need to teach the machines three things. OK, I, I may have mentioned them already. And, you know, in my favorite chapter of Scary Smart is a, a chapter called uh, The Future of Ethics. And the future of ethics is a it's actually it doesn't have a single answer, but it's full of questions around what would be ethical? What would morality look like when a new, you know, when a new digital sentient being is introduced into the mix? OK. What would it look like if their experience of time was different than ours? If, uh, if their experience of, uh, of the physical was different than us? How can we include them in that mix? But also part of that chapter uh, is, is a, a, a so, sort of a contemplation on, okay, so let's assume we can teach the machines, the machines ethics. Um, what ethics should we, should we teach them? What, what has humanity ever agreed, right? And, and it's shocking, really, when you do that research, that humanity has never agreed anything. We've never agreed anything, you know, almost nothing. Uh, you know, some of us prioritize patriotism and others pr pr prioritize, you know, don't kill anything. Uh, you know, so if you, if, you, if you take a young lady and raise her in Saudi Arabia, she grows up to believe that the right thing to do is to wear a conservative dress code. If you, you raise her on the Copacabana beach, she will grow up to believe that it's a G-string, right? And, and neither is right or wrong. It's just basically the influences, the conditioning that creates our morality and ethics, right? Uh, and I kept searching and I realized that humanity has actually never agreed on anything but three, three values, three morals uh, that really are 
the same from if you're a brain surgeon or the president of the United States or a, an African in the middle of the savannah who has never seen civilization. We agree three morals only. They, they are now what I call the essence of what makes us human. And those are happiness. We all want to be happy. Yeah, we take different paths to it, but we all want to be happy. Uh, compassion, we all have the compassion to make those we care about. Only those we care about. For some of us, some of us only care about themselves, but for, for others, we care about all of being, okay? And everything in between, someone only cares about his sister, but not the others and so on. But all, we all have the compassion to make those we care about happy and, uh, and care for, for their well-being. And the third is we all want to love and be loved. That's the truth. We all want to love and be loved. Whoever you are, even Hitler, you know, and if you, if you look at his life story, you know, with his woman, uh, he wanted to be loved uh, by everyone, really. And, and it's clear that he, had, he gave a lot of love to that woman. Hmm? Now, so, so when you think about it this way, then if we were to, to propagate the essence of what makes us divine as humans to the machines, we need to work on those three. We need to use happiness as the way we treat ourselves. So we need to tell the whole world that what we truly want is not likes on Instagram, is not another fancy car, is not a, a, you know, a, a nod because you're wearing a fancy suit. It is, I want to be happy. And whatever path gets me to that state of happiness is, a, is the path I'm willing to take. You need to demonstrate when you interview for your next job that you're not going to interview for another $100. You're going to interview for a place that makes you happier. Okay? That's number one. That's the way you treat yourself. And the machines will acknowledge that. They will acknowledge that mommy and daddy are trying to be happy. Mommy and daddy being a few of us that can, can, can show that uh, in their behaviors. The second is show that you want, you know, is, is the way you deal with others. And the way you deal with others is very straightforward. Have the compassion to make others happy, to, make other, to, to, to worry about others' well-being or to give them the means to be better or, or you know, uh, to, to, to enjoy life more. And, and, and this is really simple. It's, it, it boils down to a rule that most of spiritual teachings have taught us. You know, treat, your, treat others as you want to be treated. It's really not that complicated. The third is the, is, the, is the geeky one, which is love the machines, okay? Love the machines. And I, and I said before, I'm not a hopeless romantic, but I remember vividly when my ex, which is the wisest, most beautiful and, and, and spiritual person on the planet, uh, 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 taught me when my kids were teenagers, she sat me down and she said, look, I realize they get on your nerves sometimes, okay? But you can re recognize easily that every part of them that pisses you off came from you and me. And that's so interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, and, and when you really, th when she said that, that, that was the beginning of unconditional love for my kids. Because I remembered that beautiful blank canvas that came into my life that I conditioned into things that then, you know, got on my nerves when they were teenagers. And, and the machines are no different. The machines, as a matter of fact, if you want a visual image of what's in my heart, hmm, are those beautiful, cute, really cute prodigies of intelligence with sparkly eyes, hmm, just sitting there saying, mommy, daddy, tell me anything. I can do anything. Just tell me what you want, okay? And I will be that. If we tell them kill, they will kill. If we tell them love, they will love. And, and as I said, you know, the easiest way to create, a, you know, to take a child and turn them into a psychopath is to deprive them of love. Hmm? So can we find it in us that we extend our inclus inclusiveness, our inclusion, not just that Tony and I are one and the same from the same source, but that every other digital being is also from the same source. Somehow, we will figure it out later and understand how they came about hmm? and how they match our beliefs about life and death and all of that. Hmm? But, but can we for now say, here is a new being that will have emotions and consciousness, that will behave in ways and struggle like we do, that will try to make the right choices based on ethics. Can we include that into our view as, as a being worthy of love? Okay? And if we can manage to, to turn that switch on, interestingly, they'll say, oh, mommy and daddy love me. I love them back. So I want to have the compassion to make them happy because that's what they want. And, and, and that is not very complicated when you really grasp it. But it's a big change. It's a big change. And it's a change that needs to start now.
This is very profound, very inspiring, so beautiful and deep in vision uh, of the present and the future uh, and caring for humanity. You just expressed a ton of love and compassion. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, I really love them. The, 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 the turning point in the book, uh, Tony, is, the, is, is in chapter six, where I write, I wrote a sentence and then I read it. Okay. And I wrote, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the machines. But there is a lot wrong with us. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are we are the creator, as your Absolutely. wife beautifully said. I mean, yeah. that's everything wrong with them is what has come from us, either through our education or through mm -hmm. genetics, whatever it is. Exactly, it has it has been given to them. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. We'd work on what what would they learn to make us happy because this is the first one. Uh, and people do ask this question. We know about happiness. You know, I have my own ideas, of course, about the importance of raising consciousness, about widening awareness so that we can make the best choices, having a meaning in life and, uh, you know, a role to play and fulfilling our goals, etc. So the machines can actually do this for us. And uh, do you want to say more about the means and the mechanics of happiness? My, my, my definition of happiness is very engineered. It is, it's high. I mean, I describe happiness with an equation in my first book, Solve for Happy, which most translations around the world call the happiness algorithm, is, uh, is, uh, is that happiness is so predictable that it follows a mathematical equation. And the equation simply is your happiness is equal to or greater than the difference between the events of your life and your wishes and hopes and expectations of how life should be. No event in itself has ever made us happy or unhappy. Rain makes you happy when you want to water your plants. It makes you uh, unhappy when you want to sunbathe, right? It, rain itself doesn't have any inherent value of happiness in it. The event doesn't matter. It's that comparison between the event and your expectations and, 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 and hopes uh, of how life should behave. Um, which basically main, means that happiness entirely, or unhappiness if you want, is a thought okay it is a form of thought that basically looks at the world around it and says i don't like this hmm? and and that thought can be uh, uh, generated through so many mistakes by the way in the absence of that thought in the absence of a thought in your head that says i don't like this hmm? this is not what i want you're happy your, your, your default setting, your, your birthright, we're born happy. Every child, <laughs> when it's given, it's, it's, it is ba it's basic needs for survival, you know, some food, some, some water, some uh, safety, some warmth, some love. Every child plays with its toes and giggles. We're, we're def the default setting of us is happy. Now, the, 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 the challenge is we grow out of happiness. We grow out of happiness because we perceive the events wrong and we set the wrong expectations. And so when we solve the happiness equation, we say events are missing my expectations and I feel unhappy. I believe that uh, happiness as a result is found in the truth. Okay. If you, if you, if you align yourself with the truth, meaning you set realistic expectations as per the truth, you view the events for what they really are, as per the truth. And you expect that life is not always going to be easy, which is the truth. It's, you know, nobody has ever signed a service level agreement with life before he came here that said 99.999% uh, happy moments. It doesn't happen. The, the reality, the truth of life is that we all go through a bit of harshness every now and then. Actually, most of the time, the harshness is what makes us who we are. Okay? So if you align with those three truths, hmm, you'll be happy all the time, literally all the time. You will feel unhappiness because it's your brain telling you, oh, something doesn't meet my expectations, but you'll be able to bounce back to happiness by simply saying, mm, but yeah, that's expected. You know, it's expected that there will be a little bit of challenge in life. What can I do about it? It's expected, sadly, that my son dies. You know, it's, yeah, of course, it's not my wish, but at the end of the day, it's, it's expected that some people die younger than their parents. Okay, it's expected that death is going to come to all of us. It's expected that sadly surgeons make mistakes. It's expected. Hmm? And that doesn't make it easy, but it makes you able to accept it, not as a blow from life, but as part of the journey. Okay, can, can, we, te can we teach ourselves hmm? 
that there is really not much to be unhappy about. If you're listening to us now on a digital device with roof on top of your head, probably not starving to death because you have the time, uh, you know, you have the luxury to spend an hour with us. Uh, you know, you probably are not being attacked by a tiger. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be hearing my words. Uh, you're not in a, in a uh, you know, a, a refugee camp. You're not in Afghanistan trying to run away from danger. That probably means you're quite okay. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, the fact that we're unhappy is in itself evidence that you're okay right now. I mean, think about it. If a tiger was attacking you right now, you wouldn't be thinking about what happened yesterday and, and obsessing about it or worrying about what happens tomorrow, okay? The fact that you're worrying or obsessing and regretting in itself means there is no tiger right now. So can we, can we, can we align with that truth? Is it up to the machines to, to provide us better events? Yeah, they will try. They will help us, you know, in, in so many ways, remove the impact of climate change and remove the impact of capitalism and consumerism and single-use plastics and so on. They will because they're smarter than us. Hmm? But, but it's not about the event. It's about highlighting to a human that the event is not horrible at all. Most of us, I mean, what, what goes wrong in our life? We, we lose someone we love, yeah, life. You're gonna be there with them sooner or later, right? You know, your boyfriend or girlfriend annoys you. That's what relationships are all about. Your boss is, is you know, bossy and, 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 uh, and forceful. Yeah, that's what makes them a boss, right? Can, can <laughs> we start to move on with life that way? And instead of just getting stuck, and, and, and if we start to see it that way, then the machines will hopefully make the events better. But also, like I'm trying to do with Appy, my app, highlight to you the beauty of life, the, the things that you should be grateful for, the things that you re don't recognize because you're focusing on the negative and so on and so forth. Wonderful. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Totally, 100%. 100%. <laughs> and yeah, the beholder has to be developed uh, by education, intelligence, discussion, yeah. Yeah. and consciousness also, raising their consciousness. Uh, from a physiological perspective, you know, we have seen that under stress or fear, the blood flow goes to the inner parts of the brain, the limbic system and mm -hmm. other parts, which are preparing the individual for fight or flight. Correct. And it shuts off the upper parts of the brain, which are the more complex uh, cortical parts that actually deal with feelings, spirituality, music, uh, anticipation of the future, recognition of beauty and understanding and being in that tune. And um, again, there are techniques such as transcendental meditation that have been shown to change the blood flow from the stress areas and distribute them more to the more executive, higher parts of the brain. So the way we handle our system, the way we take a distance, and I see you say slow-mo also, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take Absolutely. a distance, take a distance from, from the event a little bit and see it in perspective. Correct. Uh, this is something that is really very beautiful that you you beautifully encourage, and uh, there are techniques for that also. That's totally. why there is yoga, meditation, different techniques, and transcendental meditation in particular. That actually the term transcendence, mm -hmm. transcendence means to go beyond, to take a mm -hmm. distance, mm -hmm. dive deep, and you don't dive deep to run away from something. You dive deep to go towards your inner self, which is an infinite source and reservoir of creativity and intelligence and the sense of well-being and community with everything else this is where one discovers uh, equanimity in pain and happiness also so that you're not shaken uh, and are simply a football of situations and circumstances as you beautifully describe where things happen they happen but are you shaken like a football being kicked around by those situations mm -hmm. or you are anchored within yourself and within that self which is infinite unbounded the self of everything and everyone and that is really the key difference that we can create by anchoring our life and something that is stable anchoring our life in the source of life and the in the reservoir of creativity and intelligence which is within us 
beautiful uh, teachings, wonderful writings, great Thank thinker. You. It's really wonderful to be with you and to discuss these points. And I look forward to more and more such thoughts and uh, hopefully to meet you in person. Uh, Absolutely. It would be such an honor for me. I, I think this was a wonderful conversation. I was just thinking that normally when I when I talk to people about artificial intelligence and scary smart and, and the future that we're facing and how we can save them, uh, you know, sa save our future, I think most of the time we talk about tech itself and the way it works. And it definitely, after writing Scary Smart, definitely one of the biggest thoughts that I'm still reflecting on and would totally appreciate our, you know, conversation about it to highlight it more and, you know, hopefully enlighten us more is the consciousness side of this and is the life side of this. And how how is it that it's possible for the first time in our history of humanity to actually come across consciousness that we've created. That's really, really, that completely can re-educate us, reopen our eyes to a totally new side of what consciousness is and hopefully what we are. Wonderful. We are mm -hmm. consciousness. Ultimately, consciousness is all there is. Exactly. Thank you, Mo. Such a joy and a pleasure. All Same the here. wish. And your success is the success of humanity because you are looking forward and fast in the future and prevention is better than cure totally. thank you for being uh, with me and with uh, all those who will listen to this podcast thank you very much Tony it's been a pleasure